Alrighty, in this video we're gonna take a look at how you can set up health checks in order to start monitoring your system. My name is Vasily Lenik and you are watching the .NET Architecture and Detailed Design Series where we are building a modular monolith notification system from scratch using industry's best practices. As a starting point we should go over what health checking is and it's a process where we regularly check if our system is up and running with all of its required dependencies, be it databases, message queues, external APIs or whatever infrastructure you might have over there. Why would we need it? And two basic examples are load balancing and orchestration. Your load balancer needs to know if the instance of your application is ready to process the requests or your orchestrator might need to know if your application is behaving and it should restart it, redeploy the whole thing together, etc. Fortunately, Microsoft did an amazing job to provide us with Nougat packages to set up health checks really fast. The first Nougat package that we need over here is health checks abstractions and I'm gonna install it into my shared library. Once that's done, I'm gonna go over here, add a simple directory, name it health checks, enter, and over here, add a simple installer. So I'm gonna call it health checks installer. Also, I'll need over here public class health constants, and inside it, I'm gonna have a public static list of string and readiness tags, which is gonna be a simple new list with a simple tag called ready. We will use this simple tag over here a little bit later when we will define what a ready or an alive health check is. With that out of the way, I'm gonna go to the notification web host, over here go to program.cs and before the service registration up on top, builder services.add health checks. With this we have the basic plumbing code in place, but we still need to add a way for the load balancer to call us. For that I'm gonna go back into the health checks installer, make this class static, and over here add a simple method that we're gonna use in program.cs to wire up a couple of routes for health checking. So the method that we'll have will be a public static web application. The name will be use health check paths. We're gonna extend the web application. So in our case, it will be app. And in here, we're gonna use the built-in methods, map health checks and provide a specific path. I prefer to have it as health ready and provide a couple of health options, health check options, which we're gonna use in a bit. The first will be predicate equals health and then health dot text contains ready and we're gonna do the same for the live check so app dot map health checks over here provide health slash live and set up a couple of no options so the health check options however for this we're gonna use another nugget package and it's basically under health check.ui.client, it's this one, install it. And over here, we're gonna set up the response writer equals UI response writer dot write health checks UI response. Add the same column and return app. We're gonna use this one method in our program.cs somewhere over here. So app.map use health checks, import the missing references. And with that, the initial setup is done. So we can go ahead and debug the solution itself. Once the application is up and running, I'm gonna go to my web browser in here, go to localhost 5000 healths and for example type in here ready so we have a simple response over here which is healthy and that's basically the overall status of our application if we are ready to process incoming requests and we've set up another tag over there which is live but you might ask me wait we didn't set any health checks over here so where from we have this result this result is basically if I open a JSON parser, we're gonna see over here that it's actually mass transit, which comes pre-built with a couple of health checks. 
so you won't need to monitor your message queue basically mass transit does it for us however if you want to set up a couple of health checks we're gonna see it in a bit that's all and good so i'm gonna return to the solution itself stop debugging and go over to for example the webhooks itself and our webhooks have a small dependency on a mongodb database to the webhooks repository inside the service infrastructure and over here i have the webhooks repository installer inside of which we're gonna add a couple of health checks for us to use a mongodb health check we're gonna go back to manage nuket packages over here health check dot mongodb so i'm gonna install this nuket package real quick once installed we can do something like this services dot add health checks add mongo database for the health check to work we're gonna need a connection string so i'm gonna inject over here the i configuration from microsoft extensions configurations and name it configuration so first things i'm gonna name this one as mongodb then we're gonna use a couple of tags so is the health constant that we've defined previously. I'm gonna import it and use the readiness tags. And then I'll need a mongodb connection string, I believe it was called. So yeah, and passing over here configuration, use mongodb dot connection string and send all these parameters as new lines just like this and this one make it non-nullable and with that done we have added a simple mongodb health check over here worth mentioning is the fact that if we type over here spnet core dot health checks dot we can see a lot of different nuget packages so redis rabbitmq postgresql azure storage service bus i don't know kafka network elasticsearch basically all these health checks work in a really similar way so you add a simple add health checks and then dot add your specific infrastructure component and then pass on inside the parameters that it needs and voila you have your health checks installed now for example you want to create a custom health check for your system how can you do that I'll show here a simple example. Basically, you can have like public plus external API health check, which would inherit from iHealth check. Inside, we're going to go ahead and just implement the missing members. For now, I'm going to replace this throw exception with a basic return task from result. And we can just pass in here healthy. And basically inside this method, you're gonna have all your custom logic to run the health check. And if you want, for example, if it's an external API health check and you're using typed HTTP clients, let's assume for a minute that our, I don't know, webhooks repository over here is using typed HTTP client. You can basically initialize it from the constructor. And then for example, on your repository run some custom method like get link async or create a custom method to call the health check of your external api and check if it's alive and running and then return the result back just as easy as that and to add the health check it's pretty straightforward you just basically say services add health checks add check and then specify that you want external API health check in here specify name let's say external health check or external API sorry external API tags and basically health constants dot readiness tags and just like that you basically created another health check for your external API if you have it like that which would go ahead and tell you if the external API is healthy. However, for now, we don't need it. So I'm going to remove it. 
and I'm gonna remove this part over here also. Now, last thing that I want to show you is regarding the SQL database. So I'm gonna go to application registry over here inside the infrastructure and application registry installer. We're using a Postgre database for application DB context. And we would like to check if we have the connection established to the database. And there are basically two ways we can do that and two different packages. The first one being if we go over here and type NP, we have NPG SQL and you basically install it and you double check the connection to your Postgres database. However, there is a more pragmatic approach. So for example, if you change this Postgres SQL database to a SQL server, you might have to rewrite the health checks. However, that's a small issue, but you can still use the microsoft.extensions.diagnostics.healthchecks.entityframework.core and if you add this nugget package however i don't need version 8.0 you can type in here services.addhealthchecks.add now all that's need to do is basically over here specify name so let's say yeah, context and specify some tags of constants and specify readiness tag. Now with all that, I'm going to return to program.cs and since in the webhooks repository, I need to send it over right now the configuration. I'm going to do just that. So builder.configuration and with that, I should be able to debug the application itself once again. And let's go and check over the health check endpoints. Now, once the application has started, I'm going to go ahead and just refresh the health endpoint. And we can see that we already have more data in here. I'm going to parse it, JSON parser, and we can see three entries. So we have our entity framework, our Mongo database, uh, and our mass transit health checks. All of them are returning healthy. So we have connection and if I, for example, turn off the database and over here, go to the notification system, turn off the database itself. So I'm going to stop it, return back to the application, refresh. We can see that we have a change in here. So I'm going to parse and we can see that we have the unhealthy. And if I go to entity frame or cortex, we have an unhealthy result. Now let's make a small detour and basically explain on the tags thingy right here and what's the difference between a ready tag and a live tag. And live tag means that the application is up and running, but it's not yet ready to receive any requests and process the information. If it's in a ready state, basically your application is ready to process requests. When might an application be alive and not be ready? It's basically when, for example, you are loading some files from some storage and at startup, like a configuration file or parsing file, it might take some time before the file is ready. In a real world scenario, your load balancer might hit the live endpoint and see, oh, okay, this application is still firing up. I'm going to use the other one. And when the application is in a ready state, it basically starts forwarding requests to it. If you like this kind of content, leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. So you get notified whenever a new video comes out. And with that, see you next time.